Welcome to Module 9, which focuses on messages to support local decision making and limit preemption for policies that improve health and well being. I'm your host, Serene Arena. To level set on local decision making and preemption, here are the definitions we use. Preemption occurs when a higher level of government limits the actions of a lower level of government. And preemption as a framework isn't in itself good or bad, especially when it sets a base level of health and safety known as floor preemption. An example of this would be minimum ages for drinking alcohol or smoking tobacco. In recent years though, state legislatures are increasingly using ceiling preemption. And this sets a level of policy or protection that local jurisdictions cannot exceed. And that can have a harmful impact on health and well being by preventing local governments from doing what they need, effectively stopping local policy innovation. So it's with these concerns in mind that we explored ways to talk about the benefits of local decision making. And we did that through the lens of the conservative archetypes, since advocates are encountering preemption most frequently in conservative states. So similar to how we developed messaging for prenatal to three discussions, we began our process by hearing from advocates about their own experiences on issues surrounding local decision making and finding out what resonated with elected officials. We tested the messages and in interviews with decision makers in each archetype and then adapted the overall messages and added specific pivots for those archetypes. Note that we haven't retested these. So we hope you'll share with us how they're working for you and what other insights you build into them as you use them. I'm sharing today the main message points with you, along with a few specific pivots. The guide also includes supporting points and insights onto why these work, as well as additional adaptations for the archetypes. And you can also download an overview of all the messages and pivots in one document from the online guide. So we're gonna walk through the messages now. In the full guide, we also provide an introduction statement and a closing statement that taken all together, creates a sequence for conversation framed by mutual understanding. So once you've made your introduction, you can start by talking about when people make decisions about their health or the health of their children, their options depend on what's available in their community. And those options are shaped by local policies. This is the level setting message where we propose a shared understanding of how policies affect people's environments and options. As an example of a pivot with someone in the church and country archetype, it's important to take care not to imply that the decision maker doesn't already know this. So you might start this with, as you know, or I suspect we may both be in this work because we see how when people make decisions about their health, et cetera. One general tip though, is to know that mo the most common concern you may hear is that local laws during COVID-19 created many challenges. When this comes up, you might say, local areas tried many things during COVID-19. There was no per perfect solution and we all learned a lot. We all live in unique communities. One size typically doesn't fit all when it comes to policies that help families be safe, healthy, and secure. This is the values message where we create alignment on what is generally agreed upon is true. And there's no pivot here. Even for people skeptical of local decision-making, the idea that every community is unique resonates strongly. One tip though, keep in mind that many state decision-makers also see themselves as local leaders who know their local communities. Policy-making at the local level allows innovation and creative problem solving that builds on local strengths and addresses local needs. This is the core message where we highlight why local decision-making is so important for communities. A pivot example here is with the populist aligned archetype, and that's that innovation can be good, but some are skeptical of giving local politicians a blank check. So show that there are checks and cross checks on that. One tip there is that you might add that local decision-making gives people the freedom to create what they need to be healthy, safe, and secure. A message that tested well with this group. All leaders are accountable to their constituents, but sometimes the state restricts the freedom of local leaders to leverage the local strengths and address specific issues. This is the caution message where we flag risks and note what's at stake. The pivot here can be with an economic influenced archetype. This group prioritizes business success and believes that business, not government, 
knows best what is needed. They also believe in the free market and think that regulations make it difficult for businesses to prosper and thrive. So one tip here is that this archetype is also the most concerned about patchwork policies. Instead, position these as pilot programs and stress that the state can save money and time by testing new ideas before trying a full rollout. The pivots and tips provide opportunities to build conversation around shared values. Check out module seven for a deeper dive into how we recommend doing that. Make space when possible to approach your ask as a conversation. Signal that you want to learn as well as share information that you have. One way to do this is by asking opening questions. This helps you learn more about what a policymaker requires for trust, understanding, and collaboration. And then you can connect their input back to your priorities. Here are some examples of opening questions on local decision-making that invites conversation and can set that stage for mutuality. One is, I'm here to talk together about how we can uplift health and well-being at the local level. What do you see as priority topics for our local communities? Another example would be, from your perspective as a member of your own neighborhood and community, what do you see as being the most beneficial aspects to local level decision making? And lastly, you could say, what are you seeing in your district? What do you think could move the needle on this? It's important to keep the door open for further connection as your conversation comes to a close. You may find that this isn't the day you make your ask, but this may be the day that you tee it up. And if you've shared your position, continue to ask questions. And remember, this is about creating conversation and connection. And also, as we've said, we've shared before, if you hear a no, it's an invitation to get curious and go deeper. Asking questions like, are there specific things that you could see yourself supporting in this area can help you build a better understanding for what you can talk about together. And that's particularly important if you come to an impasse on a specific topic. Look for opportunities to collaborate around shared values rather than emphasizing how different you are or how much you disagree. Pause and reroute. You might do this by asking a question like, what I'm hearing is that your constituent safety is a top priority for you. I also care about prioritizing people's safety. What are some areas where safety is currently a concern for you? And something to note here as well is that we heard from many of the officials we interviewed that while they may not agree with you on one topic, they, may, they very well may support you on another. End conversations in ways that keep the door open for further conversation and discussion, even if you decide that that discussion should be with someone else rather than yourself. And that's where we want to acknowledge that despite practice and intent, there are some situations where you may feel that ending the conversation early or even immediately is the safest thing to do. We share examples in the guide of how to exit conversations like this. And here are two of those. I'm not comfortable with how this conversation is going. And I think the best thing for today is to stop where we're at now. I appreciate your time and I will follow up via email. Another approach can be, this policy is so important for so many people. I want to make sure to share everything that's built into it. And I think my colleague would be a good person to talk through these details with you. Can we schedule a follow-up meeting with them? Prioritize self-care. It may make sense to find another avenue or action. Honor that. So here are a few things to consider as you reflect on this module. When you're discussing the need for local decision-making, how do you start the conversation? What are some of the concerns you hear? How do you frame your ask and response? And what shared values might create a different kind of opening? How can you invite further conversation? And as always, are there questions and discussion points you'd like to bring to the live training, to a TA session, or to a discussion with your coalition? Thank you for being here. Learn more about finding commonalities and solutions with decision makers by visiting the full guide online, a living document that will grow as we continue this work.